get a little bit of help, but not very much. After 70 years of television, people here are pretty well brainwashed. And it's so sad that that's the kind of country that we live in. You know, I mentioned something to Michelle that we did on our radio program this week. It will play starting Monday on the 15-minute programs that we do on Wilkins Radio Communication, Radio Network. And we talked about pointing out the seven heads and the ten horns in the book of Revelations, chapter 13. In chapter 12, they've got them there. They're very informative, but people don't understand things like verses 3 and 4 in chapter 13 of Revelations. I'm not going to spend a lot of time in it, but if you would, point your fingers toward us and let's pray. Father, we ask you right now to open up the eyes of people. I believe you, God, you can do it. And Father, I want to thank you for it in Jesus' name. And everybody said? Amen. Open your Bibles to Revelations 13, and then I want you to go to 1 Peter with me. As I said, it's humbling to get letters from all over the world. I got one from Russia the other day. Actually, for a couple of them. From Russia, one from South Africa. <clears throat> and they were very encouraged with our program. They said... Uh, as usual, they said, that's kind of nice to hear your radio program. They give us evidence that they really had listened to it. And uh, they liked what they hear. But it's very unusual to them. In a lot of those places, they have no preachers at all. None. Zero. And you know, our programs have been so informative. We try to tell them how to get a Bible what kind of Bible to get. We try to tell them how to get a Strong's Bible Concordance so they can learn to study with us. And I think it's real humbling to be able to reach people that appreciate it. And that means a lot to me. I want you to look at Revelations 13, 3 with me for a minute. Many people don't know about these scriptures. As a matter of fact, I don't know anybody that knows about it. If they are, they're not bold enough to preach it. And when I say bold enough, you'll see what I mean. For the past 70 years since television came out, we've had a barrage bombarding the minds of people to make them to believe certain things that they were doing before television ever came out. You can go back if you can find the evidence of some of the books that's written about Abraham Lincoln. You can go back and look at the newspapers that we have access to from 1915, how they were using the newspapers to scam people for money in a blatant lie. And they've been doing it, they've been doing it since <clears throat> early 50s here when the television came out. And one of the things that they've been doing is they've been lifting up Israel as a nation. It's the holy nation. Oh, it's the holy land. Oh, it's the holy land. Well, you know, there's... An ideal in the Bible of Revelation 19.11 that Jesus is coming back to take possession of the land, then it will be holy. Right now, Revelation chapter 11, verse number 8, you can look at it yourself. It says that it is a city of Sodom and Egypt. I'm talking about Jerusalem, this great place that they say that's so holy. It's a city now of Sodomy. Bio sex is not very holy. 
This is what they're doing. It's possessed by people from 1948 that went in. They're not from the land of Egypt. They have no ancient Israelite blood in them. We were told by television they did. It's a brainwashing scam. All of the tour groups goes over there. This is from money-making Zionists that have portrayed Israel as being this, oh, this is where Jesus walked. I want to go. Oh, I want to be baptized in Jordan. I remember when I first got saved, the guys had it in the early 70s on television that you could buy a piece of Israeli dirt that was so blessed and anointed. Then they had a little bit of water they wanted to give you that they brought back personally from Israel. Do I believe any of that? No, but if they did, it has no power. I don't believe that because it's from a certain place that it had any power. I do believe in Acts 19 that there is an anointing that God can put on certain things, but not what they were insinuating. They've always used these things to brainwash people and to do it for money. In Revelations 13, number 3, verse 3, look what it says. I saw one of the heads. Now if you notice the head in verse 13 had seven heads. This is the war machine for Israel. Israel is one of the heads. You could say it's like this. It's one of the heads. It's a war machine for the serpent. If you notice the heads, it's easy. Now that you go to see how they vote in the United Nations, how that they all were together in World War I except for Germany, they were all there, and then later on, it includes Germany because they took it over. Now there's one head that's wounded unto death. For 2,000 years, Israel has been dead, but since 1948, they brought it back. Look what it said in verse 4. I saw one of the heads that was wounded to death, and his deadly wound was healed, and all the world wondered after the head. They have taken this head of Israel, they've lifted it up as being holy, anointed, now they've escalated a little bit from the Kabbalah and the Talmud. They have escalated the ideas of the Jews being holy and the rabbi being holy. And all you got to do is look at your Bible. For people that's not Bible read, it's a very dangerous situation to be in. Matthew 23, 8 said, Call no man rabbi. How would you like to be a Christian that honors John Hagee's idea of not only calling them rabbis, and this is the same with Copeland and these other guys, but bringing them in, giving them a million dollar check. You don't know where it's going to. Apparently it's going to the whole people of Sodomy and Egypt there in Israel. They'll never tell you, oh, your money's going to be spent. No, it's to bless Israel. They've been lifting this Israel up for 70 years. They've blinded the minds of people. They use the media. They've always controlled the media. They control the newspapers. They control the TV. And they got everything to pull the people into TV from black magic sports all the way down to blessing things that are not blessable. And you know, this is the whole thing about it. We're living in troublous times. So you know this 70 years that they have been pounding people with verse, th with verse 3 has caused everybody to worship Israel, worshiping the rabbis. And the Kabbalah, which has four books in it. One of them is the Zohar. And this is what the rabbis want to get in and teach the Christian church to worship out of. So we as a group, we must be able to pray. And I'm going to bring you to the revelation. Go with me now to 1 Peter. We cannot defeat these people by ourselves. We don't have the news media with us. The news media is owned by them. When I say them, I mean the Jews from Wall Street, Hollywood, United Nations, if you want to call them that, European Union, all them people are together. But the real owners are the Jews out of Hollywood and Wall Street. These are the guys like Rupert Murdoch that owns Fox News. These guys have an agenda. They know exactly what they're doing. They use it to raise gas prices. They use it to raise other prices. They use it to sell false products that's supposed to be better and 
more concentrated and oh, each time they go up with this, they use it to take your power bill. How many of y'all get a power bill? And then we're going to get you a better price and you're going to go here to get it. And, oh, we'll get your price from over here. And then they wind up charging you delivery charges so high that you pay delivery charges and the power bill. How many of y'all know now you've got two bills, the same thing, and they're the same amount of money as you used to pay for one bill? Come on, church, somebody say amen. amen. I mean, you know it's a big scam. It's all run by the same group of people. So I want you to go with me to the book of 1 Peter, chapter 1 and 2, and I want to show you some things that we're faced with today because of the media. I want to show you some things that we're faced with today because of the brainwashing that they're doing with the media and how effective that it's been across the religious sector of our country. We are living in those times when these guys have brainwashed us. They have did it from our childhood. They're still doing it. And you know what? They're never going to stop trying. No matter how much you expose them, they're still going to stay right on with their scams. If you notice something, it talks about in verse 13, 14, 15, 16, and 17. I mentioned a little bit of this last week. He uses verse 13 before 14. It's another, obviously, it's another idea of Ephesians 4.23 and 4.24 where it talks about here, gird up the loins of your mind and seal up the hope that you've got within you. Basically, is what they're saying. In verse 14, it's talking about letting the world fashion you and make you to what the world wants you to be. The cameras and the media wants to place a certain idea within you. They want to actually conform you to the world. They want to make you think like the world. People that are brainwashed, they watch television. They get educated with it. They spend their pastime with it. They find out all the new fads with it, all the new clothes, all of the new homosexuals, and all the new lesbians, and all of the new LGBT. And now they got one for the little children. You know, they want to authorize people to have sex with a baby and let the baby tell you that it's okay. I mean, isn't that the kind of world you like where they can take a child and tell you, oh, the child said I could have sex with them. These ideals are moved from television into our children. This is why they want LGBT bathrooms. And they want to say that, oh, we're doing that to give these people these rights. Then they hire these people to get up and say stuff like, oh, my child is a boy, but he should have been a girl. And all these crazy things. But you know, this is the ideal. You watch yourself in verse 13. Gird up the loins of your mind. Learn to put a hedge around yourself. Don't let these people place these ideas within you. Because they will do it with the power of demons and enchantments and all of these things that they're using. You wouldn't believe that they've got black magic working on television, would you? Oh no! They did not got that, Pastor. No, we've got a bunch of brainwashed people that think those are real honest, nice people, like Sean Hannity, uh-huh, that would just never lie to anybody. Oh, he's a good Catholic. Sure. People don't believe brainwashing that worked with black magic right on our television. It's worked to us to conform us to the, in, to the image of the world. You see that word fashioning in verse 14? That you don't be fashioned with your former lust. In other words, they don't want you to be that. Here's what he says in verse 15. But be ye, be as he which hath called you holy in all manner of conversation, because it's written, be ye holy, for I am holy. And if you call on the Father, who without respect of person judges according to every man's works, while you pass in your time here sojourning, and he used the word sojourning because this is not our home, here in fear. Notice what he talks about holy. Holy is a word that you should not use around churches today. If you use the word holy around churches today, they'll probably want you to, uh, you know, refer to multiple gods, polytheism, you know, maybe a snake god. That's what the Jews worship. They worship the snake god. They worship the serpent. 
All you got to do is look him up in Strong's Bible Concordance. He uses the enchantments against people to control them. They use these incantations like they use in pentagrams to put spells on people. And you wonder why I, I talk to some people and I can't go into it now. But you know, I ask him, why did they kill 60 million people in World War II, but only 6 million of them is referred to and they're Jews? What happened to the other 54 million people? How did they get killed and where are they? And he was a soldier. And he said, you know, I never thought about that. And I asked him, I said, I wonder why you're not thinking about this kind of stuff that happened. Well, I never thought about it. No, you didn't because they're working scams with it. They don't put it in our school books correctly. You know, they try to conform everyone to the image of the world. But anyway, let's talk about holy for a minute. What is holy? Holy is being freed in your mind for one thing. Holy is abstaining from lust and having the ability to do so, which we should have. You've been born again with the Holy Spirit. God wants you to use the Spirit and use the Word of God to change your personality and don't be conformed to the world. You want to be holy? Stay away from the idea of lust and pride. That's the nature of the devil. If you want to stay away from the, from the idea of lust and pride, don't let the devil put worldly music in you. Don't let him put sex things on you from uh, evening unwinding on uh, what I want to call it, uh, sorcery television or black magic, either one. In other words, uh, we got the idea that's been placed in people in America today that we have to unwind in front of black magic television in the evening. You know, they can teach you how, oh, don't judge nobody, pastor. I don't judge them. The Bible does the judging. I want to tell people because they've been on the thing for the past 15 years. Oh, don't judge anybody now. Yeah, I guess Jesus didn't know what he was talking about, huh? When he put the Holy Spirit in the disciples and the apostles to write what they had written. When they named people in the scriptures and you got these idiots running around churches talking about, oh, don't judge nobody now. Bible is definitely judging people in itself. We as Christians are lights of the world. We all know what a light does. We expose darkness, amen? amen. If you don't come against it, then evidently you're on somebody else's side. That's basically what it is. Nevertheless, holiness is to be having your nature fed with God. That's what keeps you holy. And being willing to come out from the world, willing to turn your mind from the things of the world. If you're not willing to turn away from it, then you know, I'm sorry, you're going to have your name to come up later on in the wrong spot. And we'll talk about that again in a minute. One of the reasons is, if you notice something here, you're a very important person. Verses 18, 19, and 20. If you've been born of Jesus by the precious blood of Jesus, if you were bought, God must love you. God must want to deliver you. But we are living in hard times because he said, come out from the world that you be not partakers of her sins. How many of y'all appreciate the holy blood of Jesus? God doesn't want to sprinkle you with holy blood and you, you turn around to unholy things. People need to have a little time to think it out. I could spend a lot of time on this, but I want to go more. I want to quickly go through this to verse chapter number 2. But before I do, I want to mention verses 23 and 24. I want you to notice what they look at. Verses 24, 1 Peter chapter 1 talks about your life being so short. You're like grass withers away. Look what it said, for all flesh is as grass and has a glory of man, the flower of grass. The grass withereth away, there it falleth away. But the word of the Lord endureth forever and is a word which the gospel is preached unto you. So, you know, we have a short time. James said it's a little vapor that lasts for a little while. Whatever you do right now matters. The Bible said in Matthew 6, 19, 20, 21, talks about laying up treasures in heaven. What you do for God matters. The devil is trying today to destroy people. Do you know what real prosperity is? These idiots that are preaching the Bible today want to put it in your mind that, oh, prosperity is having a lot of money. 
Seen a video of Kenneth Hagin's thing where they're running around the studio talking about, while you're running, God is giving you money. That's the most satanic idea. That's black magic and sorcery. Anybody tells you God's going to give you money as a blessing, that is a lie. God will meet your needs, and then it's much more greater than money. How many of y'all know that there's a lot of people have it all together turned to reverse on them because of demons? Prosperity, that's prosperity is peace. How many of y'all like peace in your life? You know what lust-driven people are? That's people that you can't be satisfied with sex. You can't be satisfied with money. You can't be satisfied with promoting the great honor. You want to lift up somebody big in the world or you want to be somebody big yourself. Peace is having Jesus to know him as your source, the source for education, the source for health, the source of strength, the source of power. Knowing the Holy Ghost is your power. Knowing that the Bible is our roadmap to heaven. Can I hear an amen? Amen. We got demons today that want to put it in our mind to chase money with Kenneth Copeland talking about, oh, he's a billionaire. (laughs) Do you know what? That is the most satanic idea that they want to place in God's people and some people because they are turned over to the black magic machine at night. They believe that stuff. And you wonder why that they can't prosper. And you wonder why they're always going in the wrong direction. But if you notice... Verse 23, the Bible said, being born again of God, we're supposed to live forever. You look at verse 24 and it warns you about this. So let me tell you what happens in chapter 2, verse 1, 1 Peter. Look what it said. Very informative. Wherefore, laying aside malice, guile, hypocrisy, the envies, and all evil speakings. If you want to know what this means, take the word laying aside all malice and put that on the bottom. This is the way I like to read it. You can read it your way. This is the way I read it. Because that talks, the word malice talks about intrinsically worthless. You know what that means in your heart? You're worthless. All you want to do is chase money or chase things of the world. I believe that God is greater than money. And Matthew 6 says to put your treasures in heaven. Amen? It's like equity you've got. If you've got any kind of equity, it's not going to be in the home you've got. It's going to be in serving God. Can I hear an Amen? You want to talk about equity in the home, go search out Agenda 21 and you'll find out how good that idea is. Not very good. Anyway, if you notice something about these things, if you want to be intrinsically evil, then all you got to do is let a little bit of guile get in your mouth. You know, try to do something like trickery. You know, that's kind of where it goes to. There's a lot of things about trickery that they're into and people think that they're so cool the word hypocrisy is talking about being a hypocrite and you're so holy, you're such a good a Christian, but you live the life of lies. You turn around and let the devil put stuff in you. You know, because you got too much of the world in you. It's pretty hard, isn't it? Envies. How I many of y'all understand about envious things? People do things out of envy. Try to get back, back at people had things happen in the past few weeks and the devil told me such a thing I won't even go into it, it's not worth repeating but you have the idea that uh, people do you evil, what do you do? You love them back, amen? That's why he said in Romans chapter 12, you overcome your enemy with good. You love them that hate you, pray for them, despitefully use you. The devil tell me that I should do this and that, I said, I know what that's a sign of. I went to hit the prayer altar. I went and got up early in the morning which I do every morning, and I prayed, and I believe, God, I want you to help them people, Lord. I want you to anoint them. I want you to give them good understanding to love them and don't let them be tormented with a demon. Can I hear amen? amen? If you don't do these things and you let envy get in you, it'll cause you to be corrupted in your mind and heart. That's not hard. Last thing it does in evil speakings. How many of y'all believe in speaking good things? I'm not trying to be a positive preacher. I'm telling you to, you know, watch how you talk to people. You have a character involved. Amen? Now, as as going into the rest of this second chapter for a little bit, I want to tell you what you're basically up against. If you're a born-again Christian and you've been brainwashed by the black magic machine, you probably believe that 
You know, you're just so anointed and everything in your life is going to be so blessed and you're just so blessed. I mean, I know guys, man, you talk to them and how you doing? Oh, I'm doing everything. Everything is just so blessed and everything is just so good. And You know, I, I won't bother to ask them what they mean by this because most of them mean just exactly what they say. There's some Christians that come along and say, I just don't want to brag on the devil. If you want to ask me how things are going with me, I could tell you how things look by the vision, but I could tell you how things are going in my heart and my mind. The Bible said the just shall live by faith. Amen? Amen. My faith walk tells me everything is fine. But if I look at my eyes and I look at my ears and I look at things, and things may not be so good. Amen? Amen? I look at everything, how the world wants to conform you to it. And if you don't go along with it, sometimes things don't look so good. Nevertheless, look what it says. <clears throat> Verse 3. Verse number 2, I mean. Chapter 2, verse 2 and 3 talks about what Christians should do if they really want to prosper and if they really want to know what real prosperity is. They should desire the sincere milk of the Word. They should take their time to learn the Bible. Write down scriptures. Get in every Bible class you can. Get in every kind of prayer meeting you can. That's prosperity. These people will pass. They can do everything in the world, but they don't have no time to serve God I, I pray that, that God will help us. Amen? The most important thing you can do is what you can do now for God. As newborn, newborn babes des desire the sincere milk of the Word, they may grow by thereby. Remember, mental and moral growth is where you want to go. The devil controls people with their mind. I mean, I used to talk about the mind all the time back in the 90s and 80s. We'd talk about it, but let me tell you something. Now these things have come forth openly and people should know why their mind is so important. I mean, that's one of the most important things in the Bible. Why do you think they want our children when they're young? Go to North Korea and look what they do to those children when they're young. They grow up believing somebody else is God. Go to these countries where they have never heard about Jesus. The more they raise their children up without Jesus. Or go down the street and look at some of your neighbors that don't believe in God. Look at their children, how they've raised them up. You want to look at them? Go down to the county morgue. That's probably where they're at down there where they've overdosed on drugs. Or go to the nightclubs at night when they're swinging. Or go, you know, I could mention other things. People that don't believe in God are kind of like Cain and his first child. Enoch, who hang himself. You want to see the other people's children, that's basically where they're at. But look, if you want to grow, you grow mentally and morally, and you look to overcome the devil. And when he comes to you with all of that garbage, you have the, the power to say, Devil, I bind you and I cast you down in the name of Jesus, and you'll not put hate in me, you'll not put envy in me, you'll not put strife in me, I will not be your hypocrite, I will not be your liar, I know a God who's anointed me with truth, and you can't have my mind, devil. Somebody say amen. amen. If you notice what he says, if you be so tasted in verse 3 that the Lord is gracious, he's good, he's for you. God wants to help you. The word gracious is talking about ascending up to God and how he wants to reach down and help you. God is on our side. Can I hear an amen? amen. But there is an agenda today of the devil to conform us to the world. Man, we have to meet God and we have to give ourselves to him. I mean, I talked about this one verse over here in verse 17. I didn't go into it. Chapter 1, it talks about soul journeying here in fear. You know what that's talking about? There comes a time when you need God in this world and you better be able to contact Him. Amen? There's a lot of people today that don't have God. They don't want God. They don't believe in God. They're too busy smoking their rope of dope. You know what I'm talking about. Taking their little stuff and going on about their multiple, multiple sex partners and all of this kind of stuff. But, you know, we that's Christians should know our source. Amen? Now, I want you to notice verse 4, 5, and 6, 7, and 8, and I want you to get something out of this because this has an idea behind it. 
When you choose to serve God, you should know scriptures like 1 Thessalonians 2.14. I think it's a very informative verse. Why don't you look at that scripture, 1 Thessalonians 2.14. I'm going to teach you something here that you can cast down those ideas from these demons and what they're teaching by the way of television and what they want to put in the hearts and the minds of every person. 2.14 Paul tells those people at Thessalonica, where we got the letter from in Greece, he says this, For ye, brethren, became followers of the churches of God which are in Judea in Christ Jesus. Now how they become followers of them? For ye also have suffered like things of your own countrymen as we have of the Jews. Their own countrymen had been persecuting them. Look what he says in verse 15 who both kill the Lord Jesus and their own prophets, and they persecute us. And they don't please God. But he says in chapter 3, verse 3 of 1 Thessalonians, look what he said. Don't be moved by these things. It's a little hard sometimes to say that and be able to believe it, because some of these things are very powerful and will motivate you in the wrong direction. Afflictions, don't be moved by these afflictions for yourself. Know how you were appointed thereunto. So go back to 1 Peter <clears throat> chapter 2 and remember what Paul said. This is not one little group of people that was persecuted. This is everybody that's born of God. If you've been born again, say amen. amen. I mean, come on, that's where we're at. Here's the idea. Many afflictions came unto me at Iconium and at Lystra, but out of them all the Lord delivered me, Paul said. All that live godly in Christ Jesus shall what? Suffer persecution. Evil men and seduers, they wax worse and worse, deceiving and being deceived. So you know, it's in the world, there's a lot of things happening, but people want to persecute you today because of Jesus. They want to pull people now and threaten them that we don't let us brainwash your children and make them a LGBT. We'll cut off the finances for your schools where we brainwash your children at. Then you'll have to pay us to brainwash them. <laughs> How many of y'all want your child brainwashed with false education? Common core, whatever you want to call it. It goes deeper than that. But anyhow, I want you to look at these four verses of five, and I want you to see what God wants to put into your heart. In these last days, they preach on television of this great blessed blessing that they have. They take people like Copeland, Charles Capps, Kenneth Hagin, and all that word of faith crap that they have, and they want to tell you, and they're still selling their tapes today. They're selling this stuff and people still buy the idea because they think that they can actually have this great faith and they can have all these jet airplanes and these billion dollars and oh, they can just have those blessings instead of the Bible blessings of walking with God. Here's the whole idea. Look what it says, verse 5. Ye also as lively stones are built up in a spiritual house, a holy priesthood, to offer up spiritual sacrifices acceptable to God by Jesus Christ. We offer up spiritual sacrifices. We, we offer up the sacrifices of praise. We go into the book of Psalms and offer up the sacrifice of thank you. We bless God. Amen? Amen. This is the whole idea. Now, I don't mean to imply that God does not bless us financially because He does. I'm saying that cannot be the criteria for which you're saved. That cannot be the criteria for the word blessing in the Bible. We have a blessing much greater than money. Can I hear an amen? amen. We offer up sacrifices of praise to God. It's so much of a blessing to be able to come into God's presence. How many of y'all thank the Lord just to be able to come into His presence? How many people do you think can go into the presence of a holy God, a royal God, a God that actually created the heavens and earth. You can't buy that with money. Amen. 1 Peter 1.18 says, We're not purchased. God didn't buy us with gold or silver. 
He bought us with his holy, royal blood, much more, much more, much more valuable than anything in this world. Look what he says, verse 6. Whereunto also it is contained in the scriptures, Behold, I lay in Sion a chief cornerstone, elect, precious, and he that believeth on him should not be confounded. The word confounded would be ashamed, discouraged. Today they don't know who we are. There's people that want to mock you behind your back. Oh, he's a Christian. Let them go ahead. I wonder what they're going to say when, whenever we're at the judgment seat of Christ and we're going to be great people and they're going to be dead. They're going to be at the judgment seat, the white throne judgment in Revelation chapter 20. And they're never going to make it to heaven and we're going to be kings and priests to God forever. I wonder what they're going to say then. There's a lot of people that don't like us today. They don't like what we preach. They don't like our Bible. They don't like the Holy Ghost. They don't say, oh, you ain't holy. Well, I'm sorry. The Bible disagrees with you. But I believe the Bible. Can I hear an amen? amen? I mean, I believe that God wants us to be holy because God is holy and we're of God. So you know the whole idea is we believe. If you believe, say amen. amen. <clears throat> now notice about the chief cornerstone which is elected of God and he's precious. Say it with me, say Jesus. Jesus. What is said in verse 7? Unto you therefore which believe he is precious. But unto them which be disobedient the stone which the builders disallowed, the same is made the head of the corners. So we look at people today, they don't want Jesus in their religion. They don't want Jesus in anything that leads to eternal life. They don't want anything to do with the royal blood. They want to worship the world. They want to worship Israel. They want to worship the rabbi. They want a God and a church that doesn't point to any kind of hell. They want to worship their self. In the last days, men shall be lovers of their self. They'll be filled with pride, pride boasting, blaspheming. They don't want anything to do with the real Bible that says you must be born again. And if you preach that, they don't like you. How many of y'all know it's not you they don't like? They don't like the Bible. They don't like the power of God. They don't like the real scriptures. They want to get rid of our Bible. They want a serpent Bible. They want some kind of a Bible that just stays away from Jesus. Whether it's a Muslim Bible, a Quran, or whether it's a Kabbalah, Talmud, some of these kind of books of black magic. You know, they don't like that. Anything is okay but Jesus. If you're not ready to be ridiculed and let people say something about you, I don't believe you'd be a very good Christian. If you believe all the stuff that they've preached on television about your blessings and all of this money you're going to get, God can take you and deliver you in a moment in the twinkling of an eye. He's able to raise up a beggar from a dunghill and make him to be a king. You look at these scriptures like Matthew 6, 33. You want to have what you need? He said, seek ye first the kingdom of God and His righteousness. All the things you have need of, He said, I'll add it to, unto you. You look at Romans 8, 17, if we're heirs of God, we're joint heirs of Christ Jesus. Amen? Amen. And it, He suffered. Say it with me. Say, we suffer too. I mean, 2 Timothy 2, 12 is a good scripture. If we reign with Him, we have to suffer with him. You don't want to suffer? Go get you another Bible. I told some guy the other day on the email, I seen him where he's lifting up the Muslim. No, excuse me, he was lifting up Mrs. White, who is the head of the Seventh-day Adventist. I told him, I said, well, you're all right. You just have to get another Bible. That's all. You can't use King James. You can't use the real Bible. I said, if you want to pretend that you know, uh, these guys that have a real church, excuse me, seven-day Adventists own hospitals, they own Kellogg's cornflakes, 
They owned all, they owned so much stuff and the Bible said in Matthew, or Luke, excuse me, Luke 4, 18, Jesus was anointed to preach the gospel to the poor. Where did they fit that in? Fit in that? Do you got any idea? I mean, if you own all of these things in the world and all of these big things, apparently you don't fit into our Bible. And y'all get awful quiet on me. But I still believe in the Bible, amen? I mean, these guys are really off base today. I think the church, the real church of the living God, the real Israel that's of God, I believe it's, I believe it's smaller than it's ever been. I believe the very fact that narrow is a way and straight is a gate is here. Look what it says in verse number 8. I got news for the devil. 1 Peter 2, 8. Look what it says. He's a stone of stumbling and a rock of offense, even to them which stumble at the word. I want to bring this out a little bit. I wrote something in our questions, in our Bible class. Are those that stumble at the word, in verse 8, are they destined to go to hell? Who is destined to go to hell? We don't really know exactly. We can point them out because we have the knowledge of a certain kind of science that we talked about last week. Can they all remember that science? Say it with me. Say omniscience. Omnipotent. Omniscient. Depends on how you want to say it and put the syllable. But the whole idea is you can tell us where somebody's going just by looking in the scriptures. It's all written down here. All you got to do is look in the scriptures. And I think Christians should be true with people. Amen? I mean, if you lie to people and you tell them, oh, you're fine, yeah, you're a real Christian. I don't think God's pleased with stuff like that. I think God wants us to be a witness. Tell them, well, that, de that depends on how you're living. Put your stuff down here and write it down on paper and I'll tell you if you're going to heaven or not. Because it has to go with the Bible. Or you can just be a real nice guy and say, well, compare your life with what you're doing to the Bible and you'll know if you're going to heaven because it tells you the foreknowledge of God. Anyway, notice the stone of stumbling tells you a little bit about the foreknowledge of God. I kind of wrote it down like this. I said, give three New Testament scriptures that prove the predestined course of the children that are not meant to be born again. One of the things I mentioned was Galatians 6.16. There's an Israel that's not of God. How do you know who that is? Well, you can go to Galatians 3.16 and see that the Israel that's of God is the seed of Abraham that they're in Jesus Christ. Amen? Yeah. I mean, that's a good one. You can look at Galatians 3, 28 and 29. Same thing. You can look at Galatians 3, 10 and tell you, well, everybody's in the law. They're going to hell unless they get in Jesus because that's a curse. I don't care if they want you to go worship on Saturday or put on a prayer shawl or get circumcised or, you know, whatever they want out of you that has to do with the law. Worship Israel. Worship the rabbi. Call them in rabbi. That's the only same thing. Amen? That's one of the things that I mentioned. Some of the other stuff I think that you could probably pick up on it. Uh, let's give you another idea here. What about it if we reverse this? I said also, give me three three different scriptures that tell us about people that's going to heaven. I mean, the stone of stumbling here in 1 Peter 2 8 talks about you don't want to come against God because if you do, he said, I'll grind you to powder. How many of y'all believe that God is not lying? If you come against this Bible and you come against the anointing of God, I'm sorry, man, you, God's going to grind you to powder. He's going to destroy you. That is the truth. How I many of y'all know there's a lot of people are coming against the God that we serve, our Bible, and some of them are so brainwashed, they think they're on the other end. 
They think they're with God and actually they're coming against God all the time. When they want to tell you about loving everybody, oh yes, I just love everybody. I don't want to tell you about nobody committing sin. Who would you hear that? Oh, I heard that from Copeland. He's so anointed. Or Pope Joe Blow from Kokomo. How many of y'all know Pope Joe Blow? Whatever. This is what they tell you. The Pope tells you, you know, oh, we just love everybody. Because they're bringing in the ecumenical movement. But let's, let's go a little deeper in this. I'm sorry, I don't want to get carried away with you. You can look at John 15. Look at John 15, and I'm going to give you an example of why that we know that we're saved. We know the truth. In John 15, 16, Jesus gives them an example, and I think you would like this. John 15, 16. Jesus said, You have not chosen me, but I have chosen you and ordained that you should go and bring forth fruit and that your fruit should remain. That whatsoever you ask the Father in my name, he will give it unto you. These things I command you that you love one another. I believe that God does not draw you. I do not believe you can be saved. You might try to be saved in your mind. You might try to live religiously. You might tell people, oh, I, I, I quit bingo. I ain't going to bingo no more. Oh, I'm down to one girlfriend now. I got rid of them other two. I mean, there's a lot of things you can quit, but that don't make you a Christian, amen? You must be born again. Unless Jesus comes to you, that's what the word election means in the New Testament. You can pray for them, <clears throat> but you cannot save them. Amen? <clears throat> it's just the way it is. Now, if you go a little bit farther, 1 Timothy 1 verse 12. <clears throat> Look at this one. 1 Timothy 1 verse 12. <clears throat> First Timothy 1 Timothy 1.12, very interesting. Paul said, verse 11, 1 Timothy 1.11, he said, according to the glorious gospel of our blessed God, which was committed to my trust. And I thank God, he said, Jesus our Lord, who enabled me, for that he counted me faithful, and put me into the ministry. How many of y'all know that the Holy Ghost put Paul into the ministry? It was God that knocked him down on the road to Damascus and told him what to do. If you all believe in what we call the grace of God, it's God that leads you to do certain things, even sometimes when it don't seem like it. I mean, you look at Joseph, he was in a dungeon and you know, we mentioned that many times. He was in a pit, falsely accused of many things, but yet he wound up in a great place. You look at Jacob in times when he had no food, but it was God moving him down to be blessed. You know, we as Christians sometimes, I don't think we appreciate the grace of God enough. Look at the other one here that I, I brought out. Chapter 20, <clears throat> 28. Book of Acts. I thought this was kind of interesting. Chapter 20. It was God that had anointed these men. How many of y'all know it's God that has to fill you with the Holy Ghost? You can't feel yourself, amen. I mean, it's good to be able to be trying all the time to stay full. But Acts 20, 28, look what he had said to the overseers of the church. Take heed therefore unto yourselves and to all the flock over which the Holy Ghost hath made you overseer. 
You can't make yourself nothing. Overseer to feed the church of God, which he purchased with his own blood. I believe there's people that God has anointed, people that God made overseers to preach the Bible and to tell people how important it is to believe the God that we're serving and to stay in the Scriptures. Amen? Because narrow is the way, to, way and straight is the gate. Few there be that find it. it. Our gospel is hid. It's hid to them that are lost. Can God deliver their mind? God knows if they would believe. Some people, you have to look at them. They just don't know the truth. They won't receive the truth. Now you go back in 1 Peter chapter 1. I'm going to close here. <clears throat> Understanding that Luke chapter 17, verse 1, talks, or wait a minute, I'm sorry, I said Luke 17, verse 1. Notice what this says. You can't come against the church of the living God, amen? When you find out that there's people today You find out there's people that really don't want anything to do with the God that we serve. Luke 17, as I said, verse 1, he said, It is impossible, but offenses will come. Things are going to happen to you. I don't care if you're a Christian who you are. Things are going to happen. But woe be unto him to whom through it come. It would be better that a millstone put around his neck and cast into the sea then it would be to offend one of my little ones. Take heed to yourself. If thy brother trespass against you, forgive him. Don't let the devil put things in your heart over this. If he trespass thee, rebuke him. And if he repent, forgive him. And if he trespass against you seven times a day, forgive him. <clears throat> seven times a day again to thee saying, I repent, thou shall forgive him. The whole thing again, ask God to forgive them. Don't let things get in your heart, but things are going to happen. But we have to make sure they don't destroy us too with anger and all of this stuff. So if you notice in 1 Peter 1 verse 8, it talks about a stumbling stone. Jesus is the millstone. You know what it is? It grinds, it grinds up corn and makes meal out of it. People that come against God are going to wind up in Revelations chapter 20 in the lake of fire that is eternal. I've got family that's going there if they don't repent. I don't think they will. Do I believe God? Oh, am I speaking negative? No, I'm speaking reality. Because the I'm not science tells me they definitely are not going in the right direction. Look in 1 Peter 2, verses 9. I'm going to close with this verse. I want you to get a good idea of what and who you are. Because prayer, I think, is the only way to keep you humble before God. If you don't humble yourself before God, you can't be saved. 1 Peter chapter 5 said, God giveth grace to the humble. You look at the humbling of God, it's all in the scriptures. The only people that don't humble are the great men of the earth, these great merchants. You know, the people that are great men, great businessmen that are worth billions. These preachers that never humble themselves. Those kind of people don't make it to heaven. You look in ro at uh, royal generation, a royal priesthood. Why are we royal? Because of the blood from 118. God birthed us and made us sons of the living God. Amen? If you're the son of God, let me hear you say amen. amen. We're the son of God that makes us royal like our heavenly father. Today we've got to deal with our body. It's terrible. You know, but one thing about it, we will get rid of this body and they will know us when we come back in Revelation 19, 11. We're not coming back to make friends. We're coming back to make war. Can I hear an amen? amen. We're coming back to take this country and I believe today we're going to finish our course with great joy because the God in whom we serve answers prayer. Can I hear an amen? amen. We're struggling today as a little bit of a church, but I believe there's many people today that still love God. We're a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, and a peculiar people. 
No, they don't receive us. But we show forth the praises of God who called us out of darkness into where? Marvelous light. And that's where sin has been exposed. And that's who we are. We're supposed to be preaching the word. Woe be unto them that preach and preach not the Bible. We got churches today, or pseudo churches. They look like they're a church. And they are, they're the church of Satan. But they claim to be preaching our God. They're not preaching Jesus. We got some that claim to be filled with the Holy Ghost. The Holy Ghost they have is not the Holy Ghost that we want. They got some to be preaching our Bible, they say. No, they're not preaching our Bible. They're preaching selective scriptures out of our Bible and twisted them like the vain philosophers in the book of Colossians, which twist the minds of people and send them in the wrong directions. That's the kind of world we're living in. So you learn to walk with God and have your walk with God. Learn to stay in the scriptures. You know, because if you go after the churches of cultural churches, how many of y'all know about cultural churches? Oh, well, I go to that church because they're all white people. Well, you're probably stupid. I mean, you've got some people that believe that, well, I go to that church because they're all black, and I just like, you're probably stupid too. How many of y'all know the Bible is the Bible? Amen. Where you get fed at, how many of y'all know that's where you go? Amen. I mean, common sense tells you that. My old dog used to come to the back door, and he'd sit there wagging his tail, and he'd look up, ha, ha, ha. And my old daddy would throw him a pork chop, and boy, that dog would come back. You learn to stay with the Scriptures. Where you learn the Bible at, where you learn to pray at, where you learn to study at, and where you learn about eternal life and then people that go there. Give the Lord a hand clap. Yeah. Let's all stand. As Brother Homer gets ready to come, I want to thank you all that have stayed with us during these times. There is a great falling away from the real Scriptures. There's a great falling away from the real Bible. There's a great falling away from the Jesus that we know. And remember, there's very few people, I believe is what the Bible says, there's a way that leads to eternal life and few there be that go. Lift your hands.